Um, I just had a couple of questions. Uh, one in your investigation, I assume you did an investigation uh, uh, concerning myself and, and Wayne. Uh, did you find anything there, um, any criminal activities or anything that would uh, lead you to believe in that area that we uh, are liable? Or, or that's for me like this too, we, we talked yesterday. Uh, what was your impression of us yesterday? Uh, well, well, let's take an answer to the first one before okay. we get to the second one. All right. As far as your criminal record is concerned, I believe you do not have a criminal record. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, and just let's say just your impression. Yesterday we talked yesterday. Uh, uh, my, my impression was very positive. Um, I wondered if you thought <coughs> that I appeared yesterday to be uh, a violent person. <coughs> I have no criminal record, so that's whatever. But it was your impression yesterday that we had come here uh, with the intent of violence, or was our conversation yesterday um, uncomfortable, not good, uh, of any type of violent uh, impression? I would say that yesterday's uh, meeting was cordial, respectful, and certainly not violent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would do. All right, thank you. Mr. Sam, sir, did you have any questions for this one? Yes, sir. Please proceed. Yes, sir. Um, so you are you are solely the one that was responsible for the the approval or the denial of the permit. Is that correct? Ultimately, it's my responsibility. Correct. Yes, sir. And and you denied that permit. I did. And I see here that. Uh, uh, you gave several comments here that was passed out uh, on point 11. It said, based on the information learned through an intensive intelligent initiative, I believe Pastor Jones intends to engage in conduct that will put his safety and uh, that of the public at risk. Uh, intelligence received leads me to believe that Pastor Jones will jeopardize the safety of the public by committing an act against the person or property of another in the form of burning a Koran. So where did you get the information that we were going to burn a Koran at the property in front of the Islamic Center? I don't believe that's what it says. Actually, sir, that's what's on my paperwork that was given to me by the court. Is this a statement that you are alleging this witness me? I'm, I'm, this is a statement that I, I was we were given by the court, uh, point 11. Is this the complaint you're referring to? Yes. Is this an affidavit that's attached to a complaint? Uh, yes, sir. It is. Okay. Is it an affidavit by this witness? It is an affidavit by this witness. Now let's show the witness why don't you show it to counsel, see if he can also identify it as part of the filing of Kings. I approach the... And if you would like to show it to the witness, please come forward, show it to the witness first, then you can ask him questions. Do the same thing. Just compare them, make sure we're dealing with examples of this. statement or any indication that we were coming to the Islamic Center to burn a Quran. That's not what that means to me. To me it means that that action that has been done will put the people in this community at risk. Nowhere in there does it say that you're going to do that again. Actually it says that we will jeopardize the safety. Uh, we will jeopardize the safety of the public by committing, not that we have committed. 
Not that we have burned the Koran. Let him finish his question. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the, the statement says, by committee an act. In other words, it will be something that will be taking place there on, on site, here, here in your county. Uh, by committing an act against a person or property of another in the form of burning the Koran. We have not, we, we have burned the Koran on March 20th. Well, this is a statement saying that we are going to commit. Take that in the form of a question. I so would we, say that I have the fear that you may do that. That's how I'm going to answer the question. But it would be my fear that you would come here and do that. But it, so it's your own opinion. It's my fear. Uh, what, what led you to believe that? Have we ever made a statement that we were going to do that at this location? No. To the best of your knowledge? To the best of my knowledge, no. Uh, to your best of your knowledge, have we ever given a media uh, interview where we have made the statement that we would burn a Koran on, at this location? No. Uh, so, uh, with that never being said, and, and more than more than one time, it's been uh, uh, repeated that we were we had come to Dearborn to protest the radicalization of Islam, to protest Sharia in America, and to protest jihad. What would lead you to believe that we would come to burn a Koran? I would fear that you would burn a Koran here through your 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 own uh, thoughts or, or imagination. I don't know if it's imagination. I would say that. Um, I recall um, your threat or desire to burn a Quran sometime about six months ago, where everybody from uh, New York and other places asked you not to do it. And at that time, you s relented or did not do it, and then ultimately you did. So therefore, um, and at that time, prior to burning it, there was uh, international information and pleas for you not to do it, and that it would put Americans' lives at risk, both home and abroad, and you chose to do it at a later date. So whether you tell me you're not going to do it, I still fear that you may or will do it. So ultimately, the answer to your question was it was just your imagination at work uh, led you to believe that we would burn the Koran. Look, I think that's our good. I'm just asking well, for I think it's cross-examination. No, it's, it's, it's your behavior that's led me to fear the people here. Even though your office directly asked us if we were going to burn a grant and we responded no. I'm not aware of that. Even though in your office yesterday, uh, Dr. Jones made that statement uh, that we had no intentions of doing anything prerogative, uh, uh, we would not burn a grant, uh, we would not do anything in any unpeaceful manner. I think in my office yesterday you made that statement. Uh, Dr. Jones made that statement. No, I think you did. So, so ultimately, that what you're saying is 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 uh, paragraph 11 then is incorrect. No, I'm saying that I have a fear that you may burn a Quran here. But it's only your personal fear. There's no evidence to back it up. It's a concern of mine. Yes or no, sir? There's no evidence to back up your fear. No evidence. Thank you. Jones? No. Oh, thank you. Redirect. Thank you. You're up to David, Chief. Um, oh, thank you. The David that you gave, um, that wasn't based on your imagination, was it? Not at all. Was it based on your uh, intelligence investigation? It was. Now, you said in the affidavit that you were concerned, the last paragraph reads in its entirety, Based on the information learned through the intensive intelligence initiative, I believe that Pastor Jones intends to engage in conduct that would put his safety and the public at risk. Next sentence. Intelligence receives, received leads me to believe that Pastor Jones will jeopardize the safety of the public by committing an act against the person or property of another in the form of burning a Quran. Is that correct? That's correct. What did you mean by that? Well, it's my belief that he may do this. Why? Because uh, he's displayed a total indifference towards the loss of human life. He's also displayed a uh, 
really a reckless disregard for his own safety. I mean, you know, he doesn't care about his own safety. Uh, and that's troubling to me as a public safety official. He has uh, apparent indifference to, towards the loss of life, and he has a disregard for his own safety. And that's, those are two very bad combinations. Well, he said, they said they weren't going to do it, right? Yes? Yes. Did, did they say they weren't going to do it back in September when they made plans to burn on the anniversary, the ninth anniversary of the, burn, the, the bombings of the New York Trade Center? They did. And then they said they weren't going to do it and they didn't do it, right? They did not at that time. Did, did they do it subsequent to that? They did. So when they said they weren't going to do it, they changed and did it, right? They did. So when, yesterday when they said they weren't going to do it, as a law enforcement officer, based on your experience, can you believe them? I have my doubts. And it's your job to put the safety of the community first, right? Yes. Do you believe that if they approach the mosque and demonstrate today at 5 o'clock to 8 o'clock that there's a likelihood that there will be a breach of the peace? I do. Is that based on your investigation? Yes. Is that based on the threats that were received? Yes. Okay. Your Honor, I'm going to uh, have this marked as number next, the affidavit and move for its admission into evidence, since counsel referred to it. And, and What's our next number, please? Yes. Oh. It is 17. 17. 17. Yes. Right. We'll mark it as 17. Now I move for its admission. Mr. Seth, do you have any objection to the exhibit being received? No, I don't. And Mr. Jones, do you have any objection to the exhibit being received? Uh, no. There being no objection, it is received. Thank you. That's all I have this witness for. Mr. Jones, did you have any follow up within those same parameters? Well, um, I don't know if it's really a, um, a question or not. I'm not sure how I actually formulate this. Um, put a question mark at the end of it, it's probably a question. So let's well, he made, a, he made a couple of statements about us having disregard for our own life uh, or for the lives of others. That, of course, is not true. Uh, well, you'll be able to testify uh, on your own behalf, okay. Mr. Jones, so that you can always attempt to rebut anything else, anything that the complainant is presenting here today. You need to elicit an answer from the witness. So it has to be in the form of a question. Uh, I, would, I would say um, it isn't the fact that, uh, uh, as you're aware of, we have received three or 400 death threats. Uh, we have turned them into the FBI, uh, into the local police. Uh, you all received many of those. Uh, does that not, in your opinion, show that we need to have a definite uh, concern uh, for our own life and for the safety of others? I could not draw that conclusion. Okay. Um, we, um, even though we are pastors and of course have absolutely no need for this, uh, after all of these actions and all of the threats, uh, then we did uh, go through uh, a series of, of forces and uh, we obtained a uh, concealed weapon permit. Uh, we have uh, weapons um, um, for our protection or for deterrent probably more. Does that not indicate that we have some concern uh, for our life or others? I can't draw that conclusion. Okay, thank you. Mr. Sapp, anything for this witness? Yes, sir. Again, on the question of uh, you have a fear uh, that we are going to burn for on uh, during the event here, uh, staged or planned for in front of the Islamic Center, is that correct? I have a concern, yes. Uh, so earlier you stated it was a fear. And it is a fear. Okay. Uh, and you said that fear is because in September uh, we said we would not burn the Quran, but then you said ultimately we turned around and we burned the Quran. Is, is that what led you to this belief? In or part, this fear? In part. Uh, even though the March event was uh, uh, publicized, it was announced, uh, it, it, was, it was advertised, uh, the, the voting on the, uh, the 
judgment of the Quran well, was something that was placed online. The date, the time, there were no, there were no surprises. Uh, we did not turn around and say we would do one thing and turn around and did something else. Uh, every one of our events has been carried out uh, as I have to, I have to, laid out. He needs to squeeze a question mark in there somewhere. Please. So what, what would lead you to believe that as we have told you what we would do here, we have never given evidence that we would do something else. What would lead you to believe we would now burn the Quran when we were told we would not? I would just answer it this way, that the burning has caused uh, great uh, inflammatory uh, responses from certain segments of the community and that uh, people are deeply offended I feel that there is a potential for danger, and that's how I answer the question. I just feel that there is a, a strong potential for danger, and that people are very deeply offended by that action. So again, there is actually no evidence to give you a conclusion that we would do something that we have not stated we would do. Uh, that's only your own personal opinion. Yes. Thank you. Anything else, Council? No. Uh, thank you, sir. You may step down. All right, I'm going to take a brief recess. At this time, I will remind the jurors that you are not to discuss the case in any regard. It'll take about five minutes. All rise for the jury.
What did she seem? Did she seem to be open-minded about going to one of the other zones in the city? Uh, the first time I discussed it with her, she said she would uh, talk to Pastor Jones about it, and uh, came back and said that no, they were not interested in the other zones. Uh, I'm going to indicate to the jury, as I did previously with other testimony, any statements purportedly made by a witness who is not going to be testifying here today may be used in evaluating the decision making of this witness, but only for that purpose. If, if there is a reported statement by Stephanie Sapp that Pastor Jones said something or, or was going to do something that cannot be taken as evidence that in fact he was going to do something or in fact had said something, it's only relevant in so far as you are, are in need of evaluating what this witness did with that information and decisions that were made based on it, uh, it cannot be used to establish the truth of the statement itself. Let's be sure we don't do that. Thank you, uh, Corporal, can you please take a look at what's in Mark 14, the better is people 14. Any thoughts about it? These are the death threats I received via email from Stand Up America now. Now, it's definitely sent some of to you all at one time, or? I would receive several a day. And did you pass those up your chain? Yes. As well? And if you take a look at those, were there any of those that uh, particularly alarmed you and or the other members of the department? There were several that said that um, threatened Mr. Jones's life and his family's lives, but there was one in particular um, that I received on April 4th that concerned me. Could you read that for us? The email states, <coughs> I am a Muslim who lives in Dearborn. I am warning you that whoever attends this protest on April 22nd will be in great danger. Put your lives at stake. Crazy radicals that you are. Ha, ha, ha. Now can you tell us whether or not this is that email is to form the basis for a current investigation by the Dearborn Police Department? Yes, it is. Thank you. I don't have anything else. Right. Uh, Mr. Sam, do you have any questions for this one? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's go right ahead. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so you're, you, the testimony you've given here is talking about the emails or the death threats that were uh, passed on to the Dearborn Police Department from our office. Is that correct? Yes. Did any of those uh, death threats, did they come from Stand Up America to individuals here at Dearborn? No, they did not. Uh, did they, were they in any way, shape, or form? And any email, any uh, thing that was sent to you, uh, give any indication that we as an organization, Dr. Jones or myself or anyone associated with us directly, would commit any acts of violence? No. Or that they threatened anyone's life? No. So, so according to why we're even here today, uh, the prosecution's complaint alleges that we have threatened. But so far, uh, the testimony you're giving is that we have been threatened. Uh, so is that a question? I, I, yeah, I'm getting there. Your so, so where in your testimony, or where have we have we uh, given the Dearborn Police Department any reason or cause to believe that we have threatened or will threaten this community? I have not testified that you have threatened. I, I'm just saying this. That's the, the complaint. Do you agree with the complaint that we have threatened this community with violence? I have not testified at all that you've threatened. I'm just asking you. Do, do you agree with that complaint? I, I'm, I just don't understand the complaint. Just one more time, the question, please. You can ask this witness if she has any personal knowledge about any facts or circumstances that would lead her to that conclusion. Yes, sir. Uh, have, have, has anything that we have done or said or communicated, would that lead you to the conclusion that we have threatened this community or the people of this community? I have not received anything from you indicating that you would Thank you. Mr. Jones, any questions for this one? Uh, no, thank you. <coughs> thank you. Any redirect? No, no. Thank you. Please step down. Next with us. People would call Robert Seeley. Sergeant Seeley. Please approach the bus stand. Mr. 
cause for argument before you're seated, please raise your right hand. You solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give in this cause will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Please have a seat. State your full name for the record. Sergeant Robert Gerald Seeley. Thank you, Counsel. You're with it. Sergeant, how long have you been with the PD and the current um, assignment? I've been with the police department six, about 16 years with my assignment about two weeks. And were you involved with the uh, application from the group Santa Fe America Now? Yes, I was. And did you work with uh, Corporal Daddy on that? Yes, I did. And can you tell us what we have been marked as people's proposals that we take? Can we show this to uh, Mr. Staff, Mr. Jones? Do they have the copy? Uh, Surrounding area, St. Thomas Christian Church. The results of your intelligence together that they would be expected to be Yes. On Friday? Yes. Okay. And directly adjacent to that is the uh, Warnell Community Church. And yes. And that's people? Exactly. St. Clement Orthodox Church. Um, your investigation revealed that they would be expected to be 200 people? Yes. The Islamic Center of America and the Maya Center would be expected 1,250 people, including 200 students? Yes. The Dearborn Academy today will have 500 staff and students. In the yes. The Sir Sarkis Armenian Apostolic Church is expected 150 people, is that correct? Yes. Finally, the Sir Sarkis Armenian Power Senior Center capacity is 150 units. That's right. Yes. Now, was there anything particularly unusual about the uh, location of the Islamic Center as far as the configuration of all the roads that um, factored in your decision when you were making the recommendations of the chain of command as to whether or not this permit should be granted? Yes. Uh, the Alter Road was developed many years ago in order to just service these six churches. And in doing that, it, they've created only two points, or one point actually, of entrance and egress to all of those churches at Alter Road. Um, because of that, with the number of parishioners that would be attending the church on that day, it creates a, a genuine traffic concern on a normal uh, church going day. And for an event like this to occur, uh, it would create uh, severe traffic problems and and safety problems for anybody that's on that in that immediate area. Uh, Sergeant, in connection with your duties and as a part of your investigation, did you put together a cost recap as to if the event did in fact take place on Alpha Road as requested, um, what the city of Dearborn would expend in uh, putting together crowd safety, police, uh, and other uh, Helicopters and barricades. Yes, I did. In fact, I can hand proposed exhibit 18, and we think that Mr. Uh, Stephen and Mr. Jones can help that to do it. Yes. I'd like to hear from them, and uh, 8 was not offered. I'll point that out. Thank you. No. First of all, no objection. 2. Which one? You Neither has been offered. Okay. Point. Do you have any objection to no. number eight? Number eight and number eighteen. Well, that's usually my question. 
Sorry. You move to admit it. I ask if there's an objection. Are you moving to admit 8 and 18? Yes, I do. All right. Mr. Seth, any objections? No objections. And Mr. Jones, any objections? Uh, no. There being none, they are both received. Thank you. Sergeant, uh, based upon your gathering these costs, well, first of all, let me back up a little bit. What did you do to gather these costs? Yes, I contacted uh, all the agencies involved in this. I contacted our uh, highways and Department of Public Works. I also contacted the uh, Michigan State Police and uh, their folks at Michigan State Police. Uh, just to give us an idea, the agencies in Dearborn would be associated with uh, the police costs. Uh, Recreation, Department of Public Works, highways, and the police department. Okay. And what's the estimated total cost to be to uh, uh, properly protect the public for the event? It's in the event of this uh, application was granted and the event didn't that properly take place on the road. $46,351.98. Thank you very much. Mr. Jones, any objections? Uh, no other questions, Your Honor. Mr. Jones, any questions for this witness? I do not. Mr. Sapp, any questions for this witness? Yes, sir. Please proceed. I see that uh, to ensure the public safety, a dump truck is needed. Yes, sir. That's a new one. Well, without the editorial, Mr. Sapp, you yes, have a chance to testify later uh, if you Yes, sir. On uh, for other other uh, events that have been staged on that location, where they charged a fee of $46,351.98. To my knowledge, I don't know of any other events. As I said, I've been in this position for about four weeks, actually. Actually, in the position about four weeks. So you don't know of any, it. So you don't know of any other group that's been charged this amount? No. Um, were those churches, uh, have those churches always been in existence when other groups uh, protested here? Or were, I, don't were know approved, any, I don't know of any other groups that are protesting there. Uh, back in November, Westboro Baptist Church, the, the, the prosecution had already mentioned then that they were there in November. Okay. Where they charged $46,000. Not to my knowledge, I was not in that disposition at that time. Uh, just a, a question that uh, was just directed since you were in charge of coming up with this number uh, or compiling the fees for this. But seeing that if all those locations, those churches, that uh, uh, elderly center was that in that location and there was a protest in that position and that, that location, that this fee would be equally uh, distributed per each event, per each uh, uh, request. Is that fair to say? I guess I don't understand the question in any event that occurs at that position in any place in the city of Dearborn an appropriate fee would, is always established. So, so the cost of someone's free speech being in that area is determined by the city according to what they think or fear uh, the outcome or the rejection of that, that speech may be. Project the public question. How so? But it's argumentative. And it hasn't been established anywhere that the city or anybody was ever talking about charging Pastor Jones $46,000 for any other figure. And how did we get to this number? Well, you, I'm going to overrule the objection. The witness is apparently in charge of this section within the police department. He has the <coughs> task of assessing the permits and, just, and giving estimates of the cost to the city. Where that leads from there, I don't know. Uh, I don't believe there has been any testimony at this point as to passing those costs on to anyone else. He simply indicated what the cost would be to the city at this point. If you want to pursue that further, Mr. Sapp, you are more than welcome to do so. Yes, sir. Uh, Officer Seelig, are you aware that we were uh, asked uh, if we were prepared to pay this fee? Uh, our agreement to pay this 46000 would uh, uh, weigh heavily whether or not our permit was approved or denied. I am not aware that was ever proposed to you. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Sorry.
Sorry, read, read, read the rec, please. Mm -hmm. yeah, Sorry, in fact, uh, is that true that there was never at any time, as far as from uh, your standpoint, any request to require this group to pay $46,000 or any other figure in connection with their, their permit application? There was never any request for them, an, an actual figure for them to pay the city of Dearborn, no. Thank you. We have nothing else, Your Honor. Mr. Jones, any follow-up, sir? No. Mr. Sapp, any follow-up with the service limits? No. no. Thank you. You may step down. Ms. Linus for the plaintiff complaint. Because people call Sergeant uh, Tobolsky. Let's <coughs> approach the limit stand. Swear you in before you're seated, raise your right hand, you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give in this cause will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Right here. Please have a seat, state full name loud enough for all to hear. Douglas Topolsky, T O P O L S K I. Counsel, your witness. Thank you. Um, sir, uh, are you employed? Yes, sir. By whom? City of Dearborn. Well, what do you do for that? I'm a uh, sergeant in charge of the traffic safety bureau. The police oh, department. I'm sorry. The police department? Right. How long have you been a police officer with the city of Dearborn, sir? I've been a police officer with the city of Dearborn for about 22 years. And how long have you been um, assigned to the traffic division? Um, about 9, 10 years. And uh, the traffic division, how, how many officers are comprised in the traffic division? Uh, it's comprised of me, and I have two investigators, they're corporals, uh, 22 civilian crossing guards, and an um, administrative assistant. Um, maybe I missed this, but uh, Sergeant, are you in charge of the traffic division? Yes, I am. Okay. And how long have you been in charge of the division? Uh, nine, nine years. Nine years. Um, in your uh, capacity as a uh, uh, supervisor of the traffic division, do you testify in court about traffic issues? Occasionally, yes. Okay. Uh, you've been called in the past to testify on those issues? Yes. And uh, you're familiar with the um, uh, area of Dearborn, correct? Yes. Having been an officer for a number of years, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, and are you familiar with the area of Alter and Ford Roads in the city of Dearborn? Yes, I am. Specifically, um, I want to draw your attention to the area involving the uh, Islamic Center of America. Are you familiar with that area? Yes, I am. And are you familiar with the buildings and the uh, layout of that location? Yes, I am. Um, your Honor, um, I believe yesterday we provided to uh, the respondents uh, a number of uh, proposed exhibits, I think. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, and uh, and uh, for ease of sake, I would uh, ask for and to save time, I'd ask for a stipulation of their aerial photographs of this location. The binder that you provide the court has does not have Exhibit 2, so I'm not sure what you're referring to there. Gentlemen, did you receive proposed Exhibits 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7? Mm -hmm. sure not here. Possibly. All right, well, let's make sure that they have an opportunity to see each proposed exhibit. And uh, in the absence of the stipulation, then we have an appropriate foundation. Okay, um, I'll look that way. I'm going to start with uh, People's Proposed Exhibit Number Three. Sorry. Mm -hmm. May I approach with this one? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Make sure that each time that uh, Mr. Sapp and Mr. Jones are shown the proposed exhibit before you present it to the First of all, are those in fact uh, aerial photographs? Uh, yes, they are. And um, for 
the record, uh, people's proposed exhibits three through seven uh, are all area photographs or photographs of the area surrounding the internet. The, um, well, the witness is going to tell us that, not you. Well, are, are they? Yes, sir. Are they photographs of the area all throughout? Uh, yes, sir. And do they fairly and accurately depict the layout of that location? Yes, they do. I move to the three through seven, right? As of when? I'm sorry? Accurately oh, depict the area as of what date? As of today. Are they accurate? Yes, they are. Is there any objection to the proposed exhibits, Mr. Sandler? Question. No. Mr. Jones, sir? Uh, no. There being no objection, the exhibits are received. Thank you. Um, if we could uh, please um, bring up people's exhibit number three. Um, Sergeant, can you see the monitor from where you're sitting? Uh, yes, for now. And, okay. And is this um, an overview of the area of Alter Road? Yes, it is. Okay. Now, can you describe for us, please, um, in your capacity as a, as a sergeant in charge of the traffic division, um, how one gets to the uh, Islamic Center or any of other churches on Alter Road? Um, you have to access the uh, Islamic Center um, through the choke point on Alter Road that comes off of Ford Road. Can I, can I approach the monitor? Be Was the question permission? If that's necessary to the testimony, well, sir. I think we can we can enlarge the as you said the uh, show point might be fine. Can you? Well, let's have the witness identify yes. the choke point, not somebody else for him. That would be leading. You can approach the screen, sir. Just keep your voice loud enough for everyone to hear. <laughs> um, if you'll notice this area right here, there's a, a turnaround, and it comes from eastbound Ford Road. Uh, and you can turn around to go west on Ford Road, or you can uh, go across Ford Road here to access this intersection here. And whether you access it from Ford Road or from the east, all the traffic eventually comes here. Uh, there are stop signs here, and uh, this is one of the biggest points of contention with complaints that we get around the mosque. So uh, either way, traffic can all have to go through here to get to the mosque. Uh, it often Drivers will often Well, let's wait for a question. I'm sorry. But you indicated that that's, that's the egress and ingress for the Alta Road into the mosque? Yes, 90, 90, probably 80, 90 percent of the mosque traffic uses that to egress and, and ingress. And the design of this location, does that cause traffic problems? Uh, it's caused immense traffic problems for about a, at least a year, probably close to two years or more. Can you tell us about that? Uh, yeah. Uh, the mosque is over here. Mosque is here. All the traffic has to eventually get to this point. So what happens is, and we're talking about just on Fridays when the mosque traffic is coming out, not the other churches or any other events. Traffic will leave the mosque, key up over here, and a lot of the drivers get impatient. And some of the drivers want to go uh, west on Ford Road, and most want to go east. So uh, as the traffic is stacking up here, a lot of the drivers will cut around other vehicles. And this is only a uh, two-lane roadway. They'll cut around other vehicles and they'll try to get to Alter Road or the exit point here, assuming that other drivers are going to go straight or other than the way they want to go. Uh, so we get road rage incidents, a lot of traffic complaints. Um, people from the mosque will call me, uh, St. Sarkis, the community center, the senior center, and they all want to do something, but because of the layout of the road, it's virtually impossible. Let's uh, do this by question and answer. Right? Did you receive you, you complaints about the layout of the road? Yes. And layout of the road, you just indicated it causes traffic backups, correct? Layout of the road and the volume of traffic. Uh, you indicated road rate situations? Yes. Just on a normal Friday with just the mosque in service, is that correct? Uh, correct. Uh, and uh, does the level or amount of traffic increase when there are other services that are being conducted at the other religious institutions? Definitely. Um, and on a day like, let's say, Good Friday, um, in addition to services at the mosque, uh, would there be services at the other religious institutions? I believe so, yes. And would that increase the flow of traffic? That's, uh, absolutely. And with the increased flow of traffic for those religious observations, would that also increase the traffic congestion? Uh, yes, it would. Is there any other way to get access to Alta Road uh, other than the, as you described, the choke point there on Ford Road? No, that's the only way. Uh, there's a couple set here. Uh, all traffic going to the mosque or any uh, facilities west of the mosque you have to come through that point right there. Is there any parking along Alton Road for the public? No, there's not. It's not available because it's a uh, it's a two-lane roadway. There are vehicles parked on, on both sides 
traffic would be able to get through. And this is without adding pedestrians to the mix. So no, there's no parking lot, no sidewalk. Uh, there's no sidewalk either? No. Um, so um, the, the property to the north of Alta Road, that's private property, is that correct? All the property um, down the length of Alta Road on the north side is private property, that's correct. Now the property to the south, that's uh, public property, correct? I believe there's a uh, county easement between Alta Road and Porter Road, yes. And there's no parking spaces um, in the public easement? No, there's not. You can resume the receipt. I want to talk to you about the uh, Ford Road, which is just um, south of Alta Road. Are you familiar with Ford Road? Yes, I am. And um, have, do you know what the posted speed limit is on Ford Road? Uh, the speed limit is 50 miles an hour. And um, how is it designed? Is it two lane road, three lane road? It's uh, three lanes in both directions, east and west, with a number of turnarounds. So it's a six lane uh, road? That's correct. And 50 miles per hour, correct? Correct. Based on your experience as a traffic uh, coordinator for the city of um, Dearborn Police Department, do people sometimes go a little faster than 50 miles an hour in Ford Road? Uh, quite often, in fact, we've done traffic enforcement there for a, a number of years, and the 85th percentile speed is probably, is, I know, is over 50. Uh, we occasionally get cars if we sat there for four hours doing enforcement doing 80 or 90 easily. What is the 85th percentile speed? The 85th percentile speed is the speed at which 85% uh, of the vehicles travel at or below. So if the 85th percentile speed was, uh, for example, 60, uh, there would be roughly 15% of vehicles going faster than that. And do you know what the, what the 85th percentile speed is on Ford Road? It's not offhand, no. I, I'm sure it's over 50, though. Okay. Based on your experience as a traffic point. That's correct. Now, um, immediately, so between Alta Road is Ford Road, it's a six lane uh, road, correct? Uh, could you repeat that? Uh, south of Alta Road is Ford Road, you told us that, correct? Right. And um, what is south of Ford Road? South of Ford Road at that location is a, uh, a wooded area near uh, some apartments, the uh, Fairlane Woods Apartments, they're two-story apartment buildings, and further into that development are patio homes and some detached condos and uh, some townhouses. Is there a wooded area of, that separates Ford Road from those other the housing developments south of Alta Road? Yes, the wooded area separates um, the eastbound side of Ford Road from the development. Are there any pedestrian crosswalks between um, Ford Road that get you across Ford Road in that area? I'm not sure that there's a, a painted crosswalk. There's a signal light at, um, at I believe, Auto Club, and you can cross at the light and get into the development. And where's Auto Club in relationship to Alter and uh, Islamic Center? Um, I believe it would be just east. Just east, okay. East on Ford Road. East on Ford Road, correct. Now, are you aware of any, uh, uh, because of the tra traffic congestions and problems you have with the traffic on Alta Road, are you aware of any uh, plans or studies to change the traffic flow? Uh, yes. As, as far back as uh, a year ago, uh, we were looking in, in our office at, based on complaints and the way to change the uh, traffic flow on there. Um, the egress point I showed you on the Ford Road as a stop sign, a lot of times drivers will try to shoot out into the wrong turnaround to go back uh, eastbound on Ford Road, and they'll actually have to go the wrong way for a certain point. Other times they'll try to go the wrong way in the other turnaround that's just west of the one I described, so there's a lot of congestion there. So uh, we couldn't find a solution that worked for the other churches, the mosque, and the uh, senior high rise. Uh, we eventually got together with the Michigan Department of Transportation, who I work with, uh, our engineering department, and I believe Wayne County Roads, and they came up with several design changes that uh, look like it'll, it'll help with traffic. Those changes have not been implemented? No, I believe they're, they are planning on starting this summer sometime, but that we're still in design stages right now. Can we go to number five, please? Showing you people's exhibit number five, which is, uh, again, an aerial photograph. Um, does this depict the area that's immediately to the west of the Islamic Center of America? Yes, it does. And, and is this the, uh, the turnaround with all the stuff you described on? Yes, it is. So there's, there's no egress um, to Ford Road or any other, any other road 
off that area, correct? No, ideally we, we would have liked to put one in there, but we can't because that cul-de-sac uh, goes right up to the ramp, takes a four road, and you're not allowed to put a driveway in uh, into that ramp from four road to Aberdeen. Now, um, you, you've seen the, 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 a video that uh, depicts this area as well, is that correct? A video? Yes. You've seen uh, a video that we prepared that depicts this area? Yes. Okay. Your Honor, um, People's Exhibit Number 2, which a uh, copy was provided to um, the respondents today, um, uh, the, the officer has seen it. Um, it, is a, it is a walking video of the area that depicts the uh, configuration. Um, I, would, I would like to show a screenshot to authenticate it and then play the video once it's Mr. Sapp, do you have any objection to that? No, sir. Mr. Jones, any objection? Oh, uh, no. Did you have a chance to actually watch the video? <laughs> no, no. Would you like the opportunity to see it before it is played in front of the jury? That's not a I don't think it's necessary. Thank you. Very well. There being no objection, Exhibit 2 will be received. Thank you. Mr. Sapp, the 2 please. Sergeant, you've indicated when you we were showing us on the diagram that on a normal Friday, um, traffic is congested to the point of causing traffic concerns. Do you recall that testimony? Yes, sir. Um, can you tell us what effect um, Good Friday, with the list observations, with a number of churches on Alton Road, uh, would do to the, the traffic as well? Well, considering that the uh, people attending each uh, church um, are probably coming from different directions. Um, that would add another variable to the usual traffic uh, mayhem we have there on a Friday. Uh, the volume of traffic is going to be a concern, and the fact that people are probably going to want to get to a somewhere other than church pretty quick after they get out is going to add to frustration and people taking chances that they wouldn't normally take just to get out of there. Um, also, um, getting out on the Ford Road will be a problem. A lot of people are going to want to go west. A lot of people will to want to go east. If somebody cuts across Ford Road to get into those turnarounds and they can't, they're going to stack up across Ford Road. And I've seen it time and time again where people try to get into the turnaround and they're either uh, not aware or cognizant or they don't care about uh, westbound Ford Road, Ford Road traffic. So they'll actually pull out on Ford Road, create a line of cars blocking Ford Road, and there's eastbound traffic coming by at uh, 50 plus miles an hour. So it's an angle accident waiting to happen. Uh, the sheer volume of traffic on a Good Friday uh, with all the churches being attended will only add to the uh, chances of that. And that's not considering pedestrians in the mix. So um, this will be a lot of traffic trying to get out of those small areas and getting into those small areas because I'm sure that the different churches have things going on at different times. This causes a huge traffic in my area. And it does on a regular Friday, let alone Good Friday. I've gotten complaints probably going on the last two years for the traffic problems, and it's everywhere from the mosque to uh, St. Sarkis, St. Clements, um, the senior high rise, Warndale Church, and also the, uh, the last church I had, Lady Oak. 
Queen of Sorrows, Lady of Sorrows, I think, Mother of Sorrows. Now, given that Good Friday observations are usually more attended, would that increase the problems of traffic? Yes, I've, I've been talking to uh, representatives of each church probably at least the last six, six months or a year. Without yeah. telling us what they said, uh, you received information from them about uh, their planned events on Good Friday? Um, just that they're having events, but also that the, uh, the, the number of attendees increases uh, to what they normally experience on, on a Sunday or Saturday. So it's even more than what's normal. Right. Um, and, you, and was that a factor that you considered when you're taking into consideration the traffic, the effect that traffic would have uh, on Good Friday and all the traffic? Yes. If now, it's usually bad, it'll be worse. Okay. Does that also affect the ability to provide services like EMS, fire, and uh, police services in that area? Yes. Um, now, if you add on top of an ordinary Good Friday, if you add on top of that the potential for thousands of demonstrators to show up, would that add any burdens to the traffic flow in the area? Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's pedestrians walking in the street in an already narrow roadway um, is bad enough. We, we get rarely any pedestrians on there. It's, it's mostly vehicular traffic. There's no sidewalks. Uh, it's the anticipated vehicular traffic that's reasonable to expect and a number of pedestrians that I think is reasonable to expect based on my experience, um, it'll virtually be impossible to maintain traffic safety uh, with pedestrians in mind, with all the vehicles, and, and the way that I expect them to be coming and going. So is it your testimony based on your understanding of the traffic flow and the traffic design that there would be significant uh, life-threatening uh, problems if those demonstrations were to occur in that area? Uh, yes, it is. Based on the layout of the roadway, the absence of sidewalks, uh, the vehicular traffic I anticipate, and the behavior of the drivers that I anticipate based on my experience. That's correct. Thank you, Sergeant. I have any questions. Any questions for this witness, Mr. Sabs? Um, yes, sir. Please proceed. Uh, yes, sir. You stated there is uh, um, situations or problems that occur on that roadway due to traffic congestion. It's been like that for quite some time. Is that correct? Can you repeat the question? Sorry. There's been a traffic uh, congestion problem with the traffic flow in that area for quite some time. Is that correct? Yes, sir. That's correct. So we did not. We, we have not created this problem. Created our, the, our our presence being here has not created that problem. The the problem I anticipate. Or no, the problem that is currently there. <coughs> you, you, you've already given testimony that there, there's already uh, major congestion, uh, road rage uh, situations, uh, illegal uh, vehicular activity that has been carrying on long before now. That's correct. One level so we have not created that situation. I don't think so. Thank you. Mr. Jones, any questions for this witness, sir? Yeah, just, just show a couple of these questions. Um, just, just possibly uh, two things. Um, good, it's, it's a difficult area. That, that's true. Um, uh, I believe it's a fact that we don't really know how many uh, protesters are, are people who would come, right? Well, part of my job, and I have to do it this way in, in traffic safety, traffic services, is I'm required to be proactive. Uh, we don't just respond to incidents, we have to anticipate what, what might happen and, uh, you know, base our actions on what potentially could happen. I've done the same thing <coughs> in schools, uh, anticipating, uh, you know, what the future may bring uh, with, with events. And, um, yeah, I, I have to be proactive. I, we, we anticipate the problem based on my experience, um, based on the totality of the circumstances, yeah, I and that. what I think is reasonable. Um, that's, that's how we conduct it. But right. well, we, we don't actually really know, in other words, uh, 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 us at Stand Up America, we have no numbers. You don't actually have any numbers. The numbers that you have, I believe, are the amount of people who are going to come to the different church services, correct? Well, based on my experience of um, over 26 years, or about 26 years as a police officer here in Detroit, I've worked at special events downtown. Um, I know how they're planned. Um, but I also know, based on the totality of circumstances, based on my experience and training, what we can expect. So that's, that's right. what we base off. Right. But, but right now, we do not have any solid numbers. 
based on my experience, I think I can reasonably anticipate, based on the totality of the circumstances here, there are going to be significant numbers, more than usual. Well, the, the amount of people who will be attending services, do you have any idea how many of those people will be? Well, what is the numbers there? Look like possibly around 2,000? For services at the combined churches? Right. I, I didn't look into those numbers. I, I heard the testimony. Yeah. Uh, so, so probably we could reasonably say, as a Stand Up America, we are bringing around five people. Uh, so the amount of people who are already going to be there, uh, because we are not certain how many protesters will come, it could be that, as advertised, absolutely no protesters will come. So actually, all we really know right now, correct, is that the church members are going to come for Good Friday, and that five additional additional people are going to come. Those are the actual facts that we have. Well, based on my experience, sir, um, yeah. this is an event. This isn't just five people coming. This is an event that's been hyped and um, in the media everywhere. And based on my experience, it's reasonable to expect there to be thousands of people because of the, uh, the grand, grandstanding, if you will, the hype, the, the media coverage, and frankly, an agenda. Yeah. So these types of events, in my experience, from Detroit, Dearborn, they tend to be uh, they, they tend to get a, a lot more visitors than you might expect. Right, but it's still, it's, not, it's still not a fact. We still do not know. I think it's a fact that it's reasonable to expect what I, what I just stated. All right. Then I guess it would be reasonable to say, too, that uh, if uh, five more people were added uh, to the people who are already coming, uh, then that would not be a problem. I think it would be reasonable to expect that if five people with the notoriety and maybe, if you will, celebrity, that the five people in this case uh, are coming with the advertising that's gone into it, I think it would be reasonable to expect that the crowd would be huge. All right, thank you. Anything else for this one? Approval. Pardon? Second. 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 So if you had five people in this, like me and my wife and my kids who go to church, that's no big deal, right? That's correct. But if you had five people that have a demonstration, there's going to be counter demonstrations, correct? That's correct. And there's going to be media, is that correct? That's, that's correct. And there's going to be a response to that, is that correct? Correct. And is it your testimony that that is the problem? Based on my experience, yes, with, with, an, uh, with a group with an agenda and a program like this and notoriety and media coverage, that, that will definitely be a problem. So even though they didn't create the traffic problem, they being State of America, they're exacerbating it by trying to get a demonstration at that location, is that correct? Based on the layout and the fact there are no sidewalks and largely the crowd, I anticipate will be pedestrian. That will be a huge problem. And that would have an impact on public safety. Correct. Thank you, Mr. Sapp. Any follow-up, sir? Here's the one question I forgot to ask. Uh, the congestion and the problems that you say arise, the, uh, the speeding fines, the road rage, uh, those are all because people are inconvenienced. Uh, would you agree? Impatience? Inconvenience? Well, I, I'm, I'm a, I think it calls into cycling. <coughs> Objection is speculation. Mr. Sapp, would you like to respond? Council is indicating, I gather, that this witness may not have any basis for testifying as to the motivation of somebody else, although I believe, frankly, he has already on the fact. Yes, sir, I, I, I would like to base the question uh, because he's already stated through his experience, he's calculated certain numbers. So through his experience, uh, through these traffic conditions, he should be able to give a speculation on uh, what, what what causes these, these activities. All right. I'm not going to allow anybody to speculate, but if the witness is able to testify <coughs> based upon his training, knowledge, experience, and particular knowledge from this area as to the effect of the event, he can talk about that. Uh, could you repeat the question? I'm sorry. So uh, due to in the inconvenience of not being able to get out as quickly as they would like, uh, people have uh, been charged with speeding fines. There has been incidents of road rage. Uh, would you agree? I would agree that uh, inconvenience could be one factor along with several others and experienced drivers, poor drivers, um, people unfamiliar with the area. So, okay. yes. so people unfamiliar with the area and experienced drivers and inconvenience uh, would be the factors. Uh, they would be among probably more factors. Are those, those are the major factors that you cited. 
they, they are all major factors. Okay. Yes. So, as do you, in your opinion, uh, do you believe inconvenience is uh, a reason or an excuse to limit free speech? Well, Jeff, I'm going to object to that. That calls for a conclusion, a legal conclusion at that. I'm going to object to that. I wish to respond to the objection. Uh, I was just asking for his opinion. I agree with counsel. It does call for a legal conclusion. Let's ask another question if you wish. Um, do you believe uh, for a matter of inconvenience, uh, if, if people are inconvenienced because of a particular location, an event should not be allowed for inconvenience reason? Any event? Any event. Um, I don't believe for, well, it, it depends. I mean, if you're talking about a residential oh, neighborhood. Oh, so we're talking about this, this area this right here. For, for inconvenience reasons. Uh, should any event be limited or canceled or not allowed because it will con it will cause a greater inconvenience? Just, I'm not going to object to relevancy because we're not talking about just inconvenience. So I'm objecting to form the question that assumes facts on evidence and it's irrelevant. Yes, sir. The officer has stated to his experience that the problems that have already uh, arose in this location are due to inconvenience and uh, uh, lack of driving skills, and uh, but inconvenience was one of those reasons. I'm going to allow the answer. The <clears throat> complainant has presented evidence with regard to the physical layout of the area, the anticipated uh, amount of, if you will, normal traffic, and the anticipated uh, increase in that traffic or attendance as a result of both particular day that this happens to fall on and the plan presented by the respondent. So he has indicated this is one of the factors with regard to assessing traffic safety and, and uh, public safety. He can talk about that. I believe inconvenience to the extent that it would cause a public safety hazard that I <coughs> would be a, a reason to um, consider the public safety hazard it would cause when deciding whether to sanction the event. So inconvenience is a good enough reason to uh, not allow an event to take place? No, I didn't say that. Well, that was the question. Is inconvenience? It's inconvenience because we you stated that inconvenience is one of the, the primary factors of the situations, the problem situations that arise on that, that in that location. Is inconvenience a good enough reason or a viable reason to deny a permit for that location. You know, I, I think we've, we've denied events before because of the convenience that would cause in a residential neighborhood, for example, but uh, my area of expertise, my responsibilities really have nothing to do with permits that are awarded. So I, I, I don't know what our, our you know, rules are. If you're asking for a personal opinion as to whether, you know, inconvenience. So is your answer yes or no? It's yes and no. Um, certain events I think would be appropriate to others. You know, maybe not. If it, so it's according to the event uh, merits a level of inconvenience. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. I, I think if you're imposing. So a, it's according to the speech would level the merit of the inconvenience. We have to let us say, wait, we have to let us answer the question without being interrupted, please. Please allow the witness to complete his sentence. Yes, sir. I apologize. Okay, could you repeat two questions ago? Um, I have to try to remember two questions. <laughs> um, is the, the type of speech or the event, does that merit the level of inconvenience? The type of speech? Um, type of event. The type of event merits... At that location. With the, rephrase it, I'm sorry, one more time. Are you asking the, the type of event would dictate the level of inconvenience? Yes. No. So, so you're saying that no matter no matter who would be there, it would still stage the same inconvenience. No, I, I think you, I, I think the question was, does the type of speech indicate the level of inconvenience? My answer was no. Type of event. Now it's the type of event. I, I said that twice. Okay. Does the type of event dictate the level of inconvenience? Yes, sir. I have no way of knowing that. Thank you, anyway. Mr. Jones, any follow-up, sir? Uh, no. Thank you. Thank you. Redirect for the complaint. No, thank you. Thank you. We step down. Thank you. Let's
We have another witness. No, I think that will complete the uh, testimony. Uh, um, I think that if people don't intend to call any additional witnesses, uh, I would uh, just uh, indicate that uh, we have received into evidence I think 18 exhibits that are marked and received into evidence. And, um, it's you're arresting? Yes, you're arresting. All right, we're close enough to know this will be a convenient time to um, recess for lunch. Uh, members of the jury, again, I would caution you not to discuss the case with anyone, including your fellow jurors. Do not have any communication of any kind with the attorneys, the parties, any of the witnesses involved in the case. If anyone should attempt to discuss the case with you, or even in your presence, you are to ask them to stop. Let them know that you are a juror on the case. You're not permitted to receive any information outside the courtroom. If they persist, then report, leave and report the incident to me as soon as you return to court. Uh, I'd like to have you back here promptly at 1, if we could, please, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> and uh, I intend to get started on time. All rise for the jury. Back on the record, this is once again in the matter of Terry Jones and in the matter of Wayne Sapp, case number is 11S0229 and 11S0231. All parties are present, the jury is returned. The uh, complainant has rested, correct? That is correct. Right. Mr. Sapp, do you wish to present any testimony or other evidence? Uh, yes, sir, Your Honor, I'd like to call a uh, witness. Yes, sir. Uh, I call uh, David Grisham uh, as a witness. Very well. So please approach the court reporter and for your full name and spell. Mm -hmm. Please approach the last chair. I'll swear you would before you're seated. Please raise your right hand if you solemnly swear or affirm that you will testify truthfully and fully on all matters before the court. So I've got a seat. I have an issue at sidebar. Uh, Uh, no, sir, I would not participate if I was asked. 
Uh, have you seen anything in the news uh, or referenced in the news that would lead you to believe that our actions there would uh, incite any violence? No, sir. Um, have you been in any activities in the past that have uh, resulted in any violent nature due to what you have done? I object to the point I object to the question of that being proper. Objection once again, please. It's improper. It's character testimony. Specific instances of conduct are improper. You have to explain that to me. The objection that counsel is making is that any specific past conduct <coughs> on your part, is that the objection of counsel? Is to Mr. Sapp's prior conduct? The specific instances of the conduct on behalf of the respondents, yes. That's what he's asking. And your objection is that those are not allowed in order to prove that they would act in conformity with their past practices. Is that the nature of the objection? Yeah. Do you wish to respond to that in any way, Mr. Sam? Uh, the question is just to uh, show the jury that we have no intention or have shown no intention through our actions or the actions conveyed to the people that are involved with us to promote or incite violence. I'm going to allow it because it, it has come out uh, through previous witnesses. There was there were questions and answers given without objection regarding prior events that these individuals were involved with and or their organization was involved with. That testimony has been elicited to my recollection by both sides in the case. In addition, uh, information has been elicited from witnesses on behalf of the complainant with regards to their reasons for drawing the conclusion that there may be large numbers of people gathering and the likely responses to the activities of these two respondents. If it is fair game to go into the thinking on the part of the complainant in assessing the situation, it's fair game uh, in response to those allegations court believes that it is relevant, it's admissible, it's along the same lines as the other evidence already brought into the case on the side of the complainant. You may, in short, give your answer. If you can still remember the question. Can you refer, can you say the question again? Now you're asking me to remember the question. You were asking about prior events, <coughs> conduct at prior events. Has anything that you've known of Stand Up America Now, Dr. Terry Jones, uh, anything we've been involved with, has it incited uh, to riot or to bring about any type of violence? Not to bottom. Uh, thank you. Mr. Jones, were you going to question the witness? Uh, no. All right, for the complainant, Cross. I'm sorry, sir, what is your name? Uh, my name is Pastor David Grisham. And you are from? Uh, I'm the director of Repent Amarillo from Amarillo, Texas. And you testified under oath today, you understand that? Yes, sir. Were you present uh, back in March when the respondents burned a Quran in, in uh, Gainesville, Florida? No, sir. Were you aware of that event? Yes, sir. Uh, do you approve of that event? Yes, sir. I attempted to burn a Quran in a public park in Amarillo, Texas on September 11, 2010. So you approve of their conduct when they burned that Quran and put it on trial, that sort of thing? Yes, sir. Uh, I, I look at it as a form of free speech. I understand. And your testimony was that, based on your understanding, that the defendant's conduct has never caused any violence. Is that what you just said? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, are you aware of the defendant's own testimony that he is aware of riots that took place because of the burning of the Quran? Are you aware of that? I am aware of that, sir. Well, let me ask you this. Is that, is that a violent, is a riot a violent action, sir? Yes, it is. So, you were aware that a violent riot took place? Yes. And just a minute ago, Mr. Sapp was asking you a question. You said you didn't know of any violence at, on behalf of the defendants. It was not on his behalf. Okay. You were aware that Mr. Um, Jones testified, I'm sorry, Mr. Jones made statements that he attributes deaths and violent riots that are attributable to his burning of the crime, correct? That he said that? Yes. I'm not aware that he said that. I didn't hear him say that. Okay. Um, would you be surprised to learn? that Mr. Jones has recognized that his burning of the Quran last month has led to riots 7,000 miles away? I've never heard him say that. Would you be surprised to learn that? I would be surprised, yeah. Would you be surprised to learn that Mr. Jones had said that 
the, the burning of the Quran led to actual deaths and people getting injured. Objection, Your Honor. Uh, and just a one moment before you give your answer, please. Uh, I'd like to uh, ask the complainant of where he's getting his information of these quotes. That, that Dr. Jones has actually uh, verbatim said that his actions have caused these riots. All right. Do you wish to respond to the objection? I, I do. I can tell you that that was Mr. Sapp's testimony just a few hours ago. And he testified about the statements that Mr. Jones made last night on television. All right. The uh, characterization of the testimony by counsel or by either Mr. Sapp or by Mr. Jones while in the role of counsel on their own behalf uh, is something for the jury to determine whether or not is, it is actually supported by the evidence in the case. The jurors will rely on their individual and collective memories during the deliberations on the issues as to whether or not anything that the parties say in their roles as counsel is supportable by the evidence. You may ask your question and receive your answer. Sir, you testified that you were not aware of any violence associated with the conduct of these two gentlemen, right? That's correct. My question is, would you be surprised to learn that there were riots and deaths as a result of these two gentlemen burning the Quran last month? I knew there were riots, and the excuse that was given by terrorists was those actions. However, I don't believe those two things are connected. I, have, I can provide you expert testimony based upon my own experience that I've been working at for 25 years as to why that would not be the case. So, I work in counterterrorism. Uh, good for you. What I'm asking you, sir... But no editorializing. I understand. But, no, uh, you don't understand. I apologize, sir. Make it a question. So it's your testimony, sir, that you don't consider the violence and the riots and the deaths that are attributable to the burning of the crime to be violence on behalf of these defendants. Is that I what just you're just the premise of the question that it's attributable to them. Let me ask it this way. If there was violence that was conducted as a result of these defendants' uh, conduct, you don't attribute that to them. As a result? Can you prove that that was a result, or is that just something someone said? So it's easy for you to say that there was no One violence. Moment, please. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, at the conclusion of the proofs in this case, one of the instructions that you will receive, and I emphasize only one, and again, you are to take all of the court's instructions together as the, as the law that you are to follow in this case. However, one of those instructions will be that the nonviolent expression of an unpopular or unwelcome political or religious belief by itself is not enough to find a breach of the peace even if the expression of that belief causes someone else to react with anger or alarm. Well, that's only one of the instructions. You will receive others, but I feel it necessary that you receive that instruction now. All right, you may proceed. So it's your testimony, sir, that there's an excuse for the violence other than these defendants' conduct. Is that what you're saying? What, yes, sir. What I'm saying is... Thank you. That was my question. Okay. Thank you. And these are friends of yours, right? Uh, acquaintances of mine, yes, sir. And you flew here from Texas to support this um, demonstration today? Yes, sir. Okay. Have, have you ever been uh, at a demonstration at that mosque uh, here in Dearborn before? No, sir. Are you familiar with the layout of that facility? Yes, I've driven by it. Okay. Um, have you um, gone down Alter Road and looked at the facility? Yes, sir. Okay. So you're familiar with the other churches in the vicinity? Yes, sir. You're familiar with the two-lane road? Yes, sir. You're familiar with the fact there's no sidewalks? Yes, sir. You're familiar with the fact there's no uh, parking along uh, that street? Yes, sir. And you're familiar with the fact there's a very limited egress and ingress in that location? Yes, sir. That's all I have. Any, uh, Mr. Sapp, any follow-up? Uh, no follow-up. And Mr. Jones, any additional yes, questions sir. for this witness, sir? Yeah, just to ask you a question uh, concerning the event that is planned for this afternoon. Yes, sir. Uh, not things that happened in the past, what not could have happened, what everybody assumes maybe happened because something else happened. Uh, dealing with our planned event this afternoon, uh, have you been approached in any way uh, to commit or be involved in anything that could be violent? No, sir. Uh, have you been uh, told 
uh, by us uh, that this event is strictly a uh, peaceful event. Yes. Uh, have you also been told that this event is not the protesting of the mosque? Yes. Uh, that it is not the protesting of, uh, of Muslims' rights within America? Yes. Uh, that this event is a protest of Sharia and Jihad? Yes. All right, thank you. Anything else? Any follow up? No. Sir, you may step down. Yes, with us, Mr. Sapp. Yes, sir, Your Honor, I'd like to call uh, Rabbi Kipper. Sir, please approach the court reporter, see that directly in front of me, give her your full name and spell it for her. Rabbi Nelson Schiffer. N-E-C-H-U-M-S-H-I-F-R-E-N. Sir, please approach the witness stand. I swear you wouldn't until you're seated. You solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give in this cause will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So have a seat. State your full name loud enough for all to hear. Rabbi Nathan Schiffer. Thank you. Mr. Sam, you are a witness. Rabbi Schiffer, have you uh, uh, been in contact with Stand Up America now about the planned event for this afternoon in front of the Islamic Center? Yes. Uh, have you agreed to, to come and support uh, the message that we have planned to give in front of the Islamic uh, Center here in Europe? Yes. Uh, at any point of time, have you, uh, along with the Stand Up America Now or Dr. Terry Jones or myself, have you threatened to engage in a course of conduct designed to breach the peace? No. In no way, shape, or form? No. Uh, do you intend, uh, on your own, uh, with our organization, with myself or Dr. Jones, do you intend to incite a breach of the peace uh, and riot by engaging in an unlawful assembly at or near 1905, 1900 Ford Road? No. So you have no intention to try to incite a riot? I do not intend to incite a riot. And you, know, you have never gotten threatened to engage in a breach of the peace? I have not done so. And to the best of your knowledge, uh, no publication we've sent you, no communication between Stand Up America now or yourself. Uh, have we mentioned that or that been brought up? No. Thank you. Cross. For the complainant. Uh, you have no questions. Mr. Jones, any questions for the witness? Uh, no. Thank you, sir. You may step down. Mr. Sapp, do we have any additional witnesses, sir? No, sir. And you will not yourself be adding any additional testimony? No, sir. Mr. Jones, do you wish to call any witnesses? Uh, we have no more, no. Do you wish to provide any testimony on your own behalf? No. Thank you very much. Do people, excuse me, do, does the complainant wish to offer any rebuttal testimony or evidence? No. Do not. All right, and that concludes the evidence to be received. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a couple of matters to go over with the parties before we give you the final instructions. In the case, we will be uh, dismissing you back into the jury room. Once again, I would caution you not to discuss the case until you are sent to the jury room expressly for that purpose. All rise for the jury.
construction was provided to the parties this morning and not to include the bracket portions. That's something that could be raised in argument if it's appropriate, uh, but simply to use the what I would regard as the standard instruction uh, language of the breach of the peace, starting out with the complainant has the burden of proving their claim that the respondents are likely to breach the peace, and then describing what a breach of the peace is. I think that it really does include the theory that's set forth in the complaint as one of the possible responses there is whether or not the uh, intent to commit a route or the Right. Any response to that? You know, the only um, distinction I would like to draw is the course of the closing uh, jury instructions um, deal with the one that we submitted to the court and to the opposing side. Um, and, uh, and our basis uh, for drawing the proposed language that was submitted to the court was based on uh, some case law, uh, specifically the In Ray Gosnell case, which I'm sure the court is familiar with. Uh, we found it uh, 234 uh, Michigan Appellate Reports. 396, a um, 1999 case, and um, since the jury is to decide whether uh, there's a likely, going to be a likely breach of peace, we submitted language uh, that was defined by the Court of Appeals and what a breach of the peace is, reaching all the way back to 1891, discussing uh, other language on what a breach of peace is. And the distinction that I'd like to point out is that in the Gosnell case, uh, quoting other cases, um, it indicates that uh, a breach of the peace has been defined in Michigan as an intentional violation of the natural rights of all persons in political society, the tranquility enjoyed by citizens and community when good order reigns among its members. Um, there's also a quote uh, right above that talking about the uh, violation of public tranquility by uh, any act or conduct inside the violence or tending to provoke or excite others to break the peace. Um, the last point I would like to make is uh, a case that um, is a little older than that, but it's a Michigan um, case as well. And it talks about uh, a definition of what a breach of the peace is, and that is the um, Davis versus Burgess case, uh, 1884 case, to be found in um, 54 Michigan reports, uh, 514. And in that case, it again discusses what a breach of the peace is, and one of the uh, important factors it says is that it, it is not uh, a requirement that actual violence is not an incentive, actual uh, personal violence is not an element of the offense um, to be considered um, for a breach of the peace. So I, I think that the instructions are good. I think that the, it can go a step further in defining the fact that the breach of the peace doesn't require actual violence and it can be an assignment by their conduct or others. That's my own observation. Don't you think that's really included in the making or assisting in making the noise disturbance trouble, improper diversion, route, or riot. Secondly, that the noise disturbance trouble, improper diversion, route, or riot must unreasonably disturb the peace and good order of the city. Isn't that essentially the same thing? Essentially, uh, the one caveat is that the uh, case that they are to take into account all of the surrounding facts and circumstances. That, that is, the, the only difference is the case in 1884 talks about no actual violence is necessary. Right. Well, I don't think violence is implied in noise or disturbance or trouble or improper diversion. However, right, you can certainly argue that in your summation that the instruction will not include anything suggesting that there has to be actual violence. Uh, all right. Any uh, commentary on the proposed instruction, Mr. Sam? Yes. Mr. Jones? Uh, no. All right. Uh, also, the court would emphasize that the last portion of the instruction as prepared by the court will be given the underlying portion that you see at the bottom of the page, uh, which I've already given to this panel, which the court believes adequately protects the First Amendment interests that are raised by the respondents in the case, because it does address the fact that the Nonviolent expression of an unpopular, unwelcome, or unwelcome political or religious belief is not enough to constitute a breach of the peace, even if it excites or causes someone else to react with anger or alarm. So, uh, now, of course, the, the complainant is also 
certainly free to argue their theory of the case as set forth in the complaint. There was a specific or actual intent to incite uh, a riot or violence. That's an argument that the complainant can make. But I believe the instructions drafted by the court adequately provides the legal basis for the jury's decision. What you argue to them, hopefully and presumably, will be based on the evidence. Uh, that is what it is to be based on. All right, uh, with regard to the form of verdict, the court intends to use a form of verdict that simply says, we, the jury, find the respondent, uh, the first checkbox says, is not likely to breach the peace, or if they decide otherwise, the second box of check says, is likely to breach the peace. If in fact, the jury makes a decision that the, they find that the respondent is not likely to breach the peace, then there is a special verdict also pursuant to the statute <coughs> that I would propose to submit only after the original finding and the special verdict that is called for in the statute is to have the jury answer the question of whether or not the complaint was malicious or frivolous. I believe that should properly be submitted only after the initial determination uh, of, the, uh, of the question of likelihood of breach of the peace. Further, the court intends to instruct the jury uh, that they are to have a unanimous verdict in this case. Anything else? I mean, man, this work, Your Honor, it could be a civil case, so I'm just wondering why it would be there. Your argument? I'll move along. Do we have the, um, I think you said the other jury instructions? No, they go through the list. Um, I, I intend to give the following 3.01 faithful performance of duties jury to follow the instructions. 3.02, facts to be de determined from the evidence. 3.03, admission of evidence. 3.04, attorney statements, not evidence. Uh, then 3.08, judge's opinion of as to the facts is to be disregarded. 3.09, jury to consider all of the evidence. 3.10, circumstantial evidence. 3.11, jurors to take, may take into account ordinary experience and observations. Uh, 3.15, I don't believe that there was a prior inconsistent statement issue, but correct me if you think I'm wrong. I don't think there was any evidence of somebody saying something previously that was different from what they testified to in court. Is that instruction being requested by the claimant? No. All right, is that instruction being requested by either of the respondents? Uh, I, I didn't note any... Uh, issue in that regard. Under chapter four, credibility of witnesses. I do intend to give the police witness instruction as indicated earlier uh, in the proceedings that their testimony is to be judged in the same standard <coughs> as any other witness. I really don't think giving the theories of the parties is necessary. It's been a relatively short trial and you will need to give your theories during your summation. I'm not going to repeat them again. I think that's unnecessary. Then under chapter eight, meaning of burden of proof, this will be, as indicated earlier, a preponderance standard based on the language set forth in the statute. Uh, and then the instruction on the claim. We will then go to deliberations and verdict. And then I'll go over the verdict form with her. And of course, 
was communication to the court. They need to communicate with the court. They can write the juror for person can write a note, and submit it to the bailiff, and it will be received by the court. Uh, any issue around those charges? Uh, nothing from the uh, <coughs> plaintiff. Any issue with regard to the court's intended instructions, Mr. Sam? No. Mr. Jones, sir? Uh, no. Very well. And are you prepared to proceed with your summation as soon as we charge the jury? Yes, sir. As soon as we bring it back, excuse me. Are you prepared as well? What do you need a moment? I think we would like to have a moment. Yes. All right. What would you like? Ten minutes? Maybe? That's fine. Is that sure. sufficient? Mm -hmm. It's just a number that came out of my head. So that's going to work? I think it should be fine. All right. Very well. We'll have, uh, let's be back in at 10 a.m. Off the record.